Hi, I'm Rich Lund, and this is the fourth video in the Planting Milkweed series. And in the first video, we showed you how to collect seeds from the wild in the springtime from some pods that maybe hadn't dispersed their seeds. Well, now this one's going to show you how to collect some good seed pods here in the fall. We're in the Michigan autumn, and we're enjoying the color changes of the leaves. And also, while driving on the highway today, I saw some of the pods opening up, dispersing their seeds like this one here has. So that's how I knew it was time to do this. What we're going to do is we're going to rubber band some of the seed pods, mostly just to show you how you could do that. So I'm here in one of my spots where I know there's always milkweed, and once your plants have actually flowered, once they're old enough to do that, they can produce these seed pods. All the seeds, you can see the pods will naturally open up, and then the wind will just disperse these little fluffs. Well, in the first video, we showed you a way to separate the seeds from that fluff, and it can make a mess. So there's some easier ways to do it, and it all starts with rubber banding your pods. Whether it be when they've already started to open, or you can, you can do it a little bit earlier than that, when they're getting close to being, if you want to say, ripe, you can take a rubber band and you can close the pod with the rubber bands. To check and see if your pod is ready or not, you can give it a little push, and if it's not easily opening, then you know it's not ripe enough yet. This one, though, is easily opening. I could collect it now, but if it wasn't easily opening, what you can do is just put a rubber band or two around the pot to prevent it from opening in the next coming days. You can leave that rubber band there and then maybe a week or two later on you can come back and collect it and your seeds will still be there. See as I'm pushing on this one, the pod's not easily opening, so that would be one that I wouldn't want to collect yet. If you have premature pods that you collect to try to get the seeds from, the seeds could be white or even green, meaning that they're not mature. They still need to mature on the plant in order for them to be viable in the spring. The seeds must mature inside those pods while the pod is still attached to the plant, so you can't just pick the pods as soon as you see them. Instead, by rubber banding them, you make sure that you don't miss out on the day when they finally are mature, because once they're mature, the pods open up and the wind disperses them. And these pods really already are mature, but I rubber banded them just to show you what it looks like and how to do it. So now that we have these pods here rubber banded, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to collect them. And then we'll take them home and show you how you can collect the seeds in a much easier way and get rid of that fluff so you don't have to deal with that either. So I gave it a couple of weeks and now here's the six pods that I had rubber banded. You can see the rubber bands, they don't work perfect, but they do keep the seeds from coming out. Some of these have split open and they would have already dispersed their seeds if I hadn't rubber banded them. Now we're going to try a method that I've seen done before and this way we can harvest the milkweed seeds without getting any of that fluff anywhere. This is going to be a better method I think than what I have in the first planting milkweed video. I learned this one while I was making these videos. I'm still going to go outside for it just because I don't want the random chance of fluff getting away from me and being in my screened in porch. So I do recommend you do this outside. So I gotta admit this is some very nice weather that we're getting spoiled by here in Michigan. Uh, we're in, we're in November, and it feels like sometime in September. I don't know if that's a good thing for the monarchs, though, or not, but it's a good thing for this video, at least. Now I'm going to collect my seeds and put them in my peanut butter jar here that I've cleaned out. So I've got that ready to go. To do this, you're going to need a plastic sealable bag and a pair of scissors after a little bit. Scissors help, too, as far as cutting off the rubber bands of your banded pods. So I'm just going to make a quick little snip right here. Cut the rubber band. Now I'm going to put my pod inside of the plastic bag. And with my hands in here, I admit that's not always the easiest, but here's where I'm going to open it up. I'm going to take out the stem that has all the seeds on it. And I lost a couple here. That's why I'm doing this outside. But the majority of the seeds in that pod are now already in my plastic bag. Now I'm going to take some loose change, I'm going to put it inside the bag there with the seeds, seal it up. With the change in there, I can shake it up, and the change is actually going to knock the seeds off of the fluff. Don't shake too hard or too vigorously, you don't want to damage the seeds. A little bit of shaking, and we're going to get most of the seeds down here at the bottom. And you can also do this with multiple pods at a time, as long as you got room for them in the bag. So I'm going to go ahead and put this other pod in here. 
open it up in the bag stuff all the seeds in there seal it up round two so after shaking for a little bit again not too hard to damage the seeds with the coins the seeds are mostly down here in the corner because they're more dense than the fluff is with them down in the corner I put over my peanut butter jar and I'm just gonna cut the tip push the seeds up a little bit Oop, got a little plastic tip in there take that out and now I can just pour my seeds directly into there and most of the fluff will come out with it now as you can see it's not perfect there's still some seeds in there and I find that though this is a pretty effective way to do it quickly and not have a lot of fluff anywhere if you want to after this if you want to make sure that those seeds have a chance to you can just open up the bag and when you're outside let the fluff fly in the wind and let nature do its thing but this is a way of getting some quick and easy seeds all at once without having to deal with all of that white stuff flying around okay so there's uh, two pods worth pretty good haul I would say now if it's fall and you're in Michigan then you're gonna to want to store these someplace you could just put them somewhere where you hope that they'll grow but you might have more success if you plant them in the spring. It's really up to you. But if you decide you're gonna plant them in the spring, you're gonna to need to store them someplace over winter. Good place to put them is in the refrigerator. The one thing though you gotta watch out for, even though my seeds are pretty dry, yours might still have some moisture. If you put them in a sealed bag in the fridge for some months at a time and there's moisture in there, you can get mold and that can kill your seeds. Even if you don't think your seeds have any moisture, it's still a good idea to be on the safe side. Lay them out onto a plate and spread them around and give them about 24 hours to dry out. That way when you store them you have a bit more confidence that there's no moisture that's going to help a mold grow and kill your seeds. As for storage, you can put them into a sealable plastic bag, but I think a paper sack is a bit better. That way if there is any residual moisture, you can be sure that it'll leak out while you store it someplace cold in the fridge or in the freezer. We're going to place ours in the freezer because that's what they experience in nature, and I've read about how the seeds do better if they are kept in cold conditions for a good season. So, put them in the freezer and make sure that they're someplace safe and we'll see you in the spring. Alright, so you got some seeds now. And you can either plant them now in the fall in certain places where you're hoping it'll grow, or if you want to start them in the spring and start them a little bit earlier, give them a head start, you can germinate them. If you haven't checked it out yet, part one of the video will show you how to do that. So that's the planting milkweed series part one. And in that, I've got another way of collecting seeds from the pods, which isn't as effective as this plastic bag and coin method. But still, it'll show you how to start the germination process if you watch the rest of the series. Also, I just wanted to take this time to say again, thank you to all of you who have subscribed for the Raising Monarch series or the Planting Milkweed series. You know, I'm trying to make some hip-hop science videos, and uh, instead, it's been these Monarch videos that have really exploded, and I love getting to hear that feedback from you guys. Uh, I really enjoy the fact that there's this many people out there in the U.S. and Canada who are trying to help the monarch butterflies. That That's really awesome. So I want to let you know my season's kind of done here in Michigan, but I still have some other videos that are going to be along the way. I listened to what you said in the Q&A request videos, and I do have some videos planned. They might not be out till spring, but they will be on their way. One of which includes how to repair a chrysalis. If when you're pulling it off it doesn't quite work out well, there's a good way to fix that. Also, we've got plenty of questions about the type of infections, whether it be the bacterial or virus kind. So I'm going to show you what those kind of symptoms are and what can you really do about that. There are some things. Not a guaranteed cure, though. And finally, also just want to get to the other small Q&A questions that you've had, but I wanted to make sure to do the research so that I can get you guys some appropriate answers to what you ask. You guys ask tons of great questions. I'm no expert, but the fact that you ask these questions, it makes me learn more, so I really appreciate that too. Now in the meantime, here in Michigan, my season might be done, but if you're really into at-home science, then check out the Indie Lab series that we're putting together. Plenty of at-home experiments that are low cost and also very effective, or I wouldn't be putting them up there. You're going to get some great results and have a lot of fun doing it. I'm Rich Lund, and thank you very much for helping out the Monarchs this year.